This is a historic moment. And there's two things that we know for certain. One is that at this time tomorrow, there will be a new president. And uh, number two is that major changes are in the offing. The National School Boards Association and the National School Boards Action Center held a forum in Washington, D.C. on the eve of the presidential inauguration, where thought leaders gathered to discuss the future of public education under the Trump administration. Here are some highlights. This is Tom Gensel. For those of us who believe in school choice, we have this question to ask. For 25 years, charters have been ascendant, now in 40 plus states. For 25 years, private school choice has been ascendant, 50 or 60 different programs. Are we going to NCLB it? Are we gonna to race to the top it by getting the federal government involved? Um, or do we say we like school choice? We think it should, we should be humble and allow the states to continue to own this. And I hope those are the kind of conversations that are happening inside the administration because I don't think there's an easy answer to this. Trump was pretty clear exactly what he wanted to do. People said he didn't spend a lot of time talking about education. It's true if you were listening for school or you're listening for uh, education or building. When he talked about the economy, when he talked about the military, and when he talked about safety, those are education issues. In terms of internal work, it's nothing heavy or deep. Uh, we want to get done what the Obama administration wanted to get done, and that was to try to find creative ways of delivering education. The disruption of education did not happen with the Donald Trump election. The disruption was the monolithic idea that Hillary was going to win. That was the disruption. The reality is people were pretty clear at the local level that they wanted change. And if it meant bringing in someone who didn't have the pedigree of what we would call a presidential candidate, so be it. It's easy, I think, to focus on teacher evaluation because there's so much controversy around it. There's a, a pretty broad consensus that the old evaluation systems were broken and something needs to be better and that how kids do should be part of that. Uh, I don't think we're going backwards on that. I think there's questions about what those measures are. But leaving that aside, the idea that we need to make sure we have a great teaching workforce and we need to do a, actually a lot to improve how we prepare and support and, and advance teachers. I think there's, there's pretty broad consensus on that. One of the underlying themes for the whole ESSA reauthorization, which affects not only the relationship with the department here in DC, but also between school districts and state agencies, is the concept of meaningful consultation. In fact, we worked hard to get language like that put into the legislation. Um, and while I think the Obama administration did uh, a number of good things, there was not necessarily the meaningful consultation that we thought needed to happen. There were a lot Could of you surprises. Give an example? Well, I mean, there were dear colleague letters and guidances that came out uh, that were given great deference that were developed without any consultation. So one of the things that we're going to be asking once the, the new team is in place is um, how do you plan to consult with state and local education leaders. Any thoughts about how the civil rights issue related to education is going to play out? The Office of Civil Rights, uh, <laughs> whether that goes away or not, um, or is diminished in power in some way, I, uh, we, can, we can speculate about. But uh, I, I feel like there is pretty consistent and, and somewhat bipartisan agreement that uh, Maintaining and uh, defending civil rights are an important issue for um, for the federal government to uh, to use here in education. Now, of course, there is going to be disagreement about exactly uh, what are we going to be enforcing and is this a right or not. For example, um, transgender bathrooms, of course, is a very divisive issue. Uh, sexual assault, etc. Let me just say, if I sure. may, from uh, from our perspective, uh, it, it clearly is a federal role and it's important. But uh, the danger with as with so many things is we can. We can deal in really broad brushstrokes and, and kind of uh, lose the importance. Well, I think what we have seen in recent years is um, an excessively assertive Department of Education that has created enormous headaches for school districts in many could, cases. Could you give an example, Tom? I mean, well, I mean, we've, no, it, it, you know, I think OCR has been pretty aggressive and uh, and in, in forcing school districts to kind of jump through a lot of hoops to demonstrate that they have not. Uh, they have not discriminated. Look, there is an important federal role, and I want to just emphasize that. We believe strongly in equity, and we think there, there has to be a standard that we're all held to. I think the question comes down to this relationship again and the presumption. I mean, the disparate uh, 
uh, impact question is, is a good example. We have to figure out a way that the department is exercising appropriate oversight, but also uh, respecting, I mean, how districts go about implementing programs is something that I think they have to be given some discretion. For all this talk, you know, this is obviously it's an exciting time, big changes. Uh, I think a year from now, we're going to feel like none of this really matters, you know, or very little of it matters in the schoolhouse. Now, if they do a big school choice thing, like I said, that gets through, that's going to have impact in the states that have those kinds of programs uh, at a policy level. But in the classroom, in my kid's school, none of this stuff is going to matter. In most kids' schools, I think what we're going to see a year or two from now is the Department of Education is going to be a very sleepy agency, that they're just not going to be doing much. Well, we were thrilled with today's event, both the turnout, which was fabulous, the room was packed, uh, but also the panel. I thought it was an outstanding panel, bringing us a variety of perspectives on all the key education issues.